This is the last video on inverse functions. You will find this on page 116 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Let's look at another example. The diagram shows the function f defined for its x is bigger and equal to negative 1 and smaller than 4. So it's almost like a function that's just break up into two parts. But just take note, um, why is it negative 1 and 4? Because if you look at this combination, the smallest is negative 1, the biggest is 4, and that's forming the domain of the function then. Okay, so it's like a combined function. So state the range of f. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute this x values in this equation. So if I substitute it in, I get negative 5, and if I substitute this one in, I get 1. So it's between negative 5 and 1. That's the range for this line. For the curve, I substitute now, this I put in 1, and I put in 4, and then if I substitute, I'm getting 1, and I'm getting 4. So again, 1 and 4, that's going to be the range. But if I want to the combination of the line and the curve, I'm just basically focusing here. I focus here, I focus here. I look for the smallest one. That's the smallest one. I put it there. I look for the biggest one. That's the biggest one. And I put it there. And that's the combination. Okay, not so difficult. Now copy the diagram and on your copy sketch the graph of the inverse. Now if you sketch it, remember just the basic. Just copy it and just remember the basic things. Remember, you can make it a little bit bigger. You can read there. Remember that the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. It's almost like you can draw a dotted line there. So first draw that line. Then the line of reflection must make a 90 degree angle with the line y equals x. And the distance from fx up to the line must be the same as. So basically, if this is 1, this is 1. Or otherwise, if you're on a grid, then this will just be the reverse. If this is, say, uh, 3 and 2, then this will be 2 and 3. The same. There's the point. It will stay on that point. Plot that. So draw your curve. Draw your line. And that will be the inverse function. You don't have to draw, draw in the reflection lines. Just use the principles to plot a few points and then draw the line. And then obtain an expression to define the inverse function, also given the set of values for which each expression is valid. So basically, I take again the separate lines. So if first the straight line, I find the inverse. Okay? And then, remember, okay, I'll, I'll show you now. Okay, yes, let's, let's first finish. I, I find the inverse. And then, remember, the range of fx is the domain of this one. So, this, okay, let's just show you here. This range, this range will become this one's domain. And this one's range will become this one's domain. Okay. Basically, the, not the combination, not the combination, I showed you incorrectly, that one. So the range will just then become the domain, and that's how you do it. And if you look in the sketch, you can actually see that it's going to be true. So if I look at the first one, uh, this was the straight line. So the straight line is now from negative 5, do you see? And it's going to be up to 1, that makes sense. And then it's going to be from 1 to 4. That also makes sense. So you can actually see it from, from this point. Because this point, uh, what would be this point? This point was now, let's just see, this was negative 1. I can even write it. This was negative 1. And negative 1 was negative 5. So this one will be then negative 5 and negative 4. And that's also how you can draw your sketch. And if this point, okay, that will stay the same. But this point, let's just look at this one. Uh, what was the extreme? That would, would have been the curve. So that would have been uh, 4 and 1. Let's see. Um, basically on the curve, I just want to go it a little bit down. Okay, let's just go down. 
So where's my curve? Okay, there was my curve. So if it was one, okay, that was the middle one, and then the end one, the end one was four. So that was four, and if it was four, my answer was four, just because it's the same value. It's a bit confusing. Okay, so that's four and four, and you can see basically on the sketch also. Can I just um, write this one also for you in? This one was one, and if it was one, it was also one. Okay. Okay, so this one was the best because these values were the same. It's a bit difficult to see, but this one you can see how I swapped that too. Okay. Not so difficult. Let's look at the, ne um, at the example. Um, I want you to stop the video and I want you to do try now 15. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's look at example 15. Try now 15. First, we're going to write it down, okay? So it's going to be GX. And it's a combination. And it's 3 minus X squared. And it is X is bigger and equal to 0. And smaller and equal to 2. And 3X minus 7 and x is bigger and equal to 2 and smaller and equal to 4. Okay, now represent on a graph the function. Now take note, this is a quadratic. Now if it's a quadratic, just have in mind, we will now substitute that because it's negative, I actually want order. Okay. Let's do it here. Because it's negative, the graph will look like this. Just get the pin correct. Now, if I, if I can start by saying, let's just do this. Say, um, I'm going to substitute 0. And then, I'm just going to get 3. And if I substitute 2, Then I'm going to get negative 1. Okay, so I can already make a sketch here. I think the best will be is to get a grid. Because it's 0, 2 and 2, 4, it's, it's mostly, can you see? It's going to be just positive values. So basically, I'm going to say at zero, it's going to be three. And at two, on two, it's going to be negative one. So basically, this is my curve, and it's coming, coming like this. If I do the next one, I'm going to say this is a straight line. So 3, if I'm going to put the 2, And then it's 4. And it's 12 minus 7 and it's 5. So at, let's just see, at 2 it's going to be negative 1. Same point here. And then it's going to be at 4. Uh, let's just see, okay, so 4 it's going to be 5. One, two, three, four, five. And don't forget that this is a straight line. Okay. And there is my function, basically. And this is how I can just maybe just indicate this point. So this point will be 2 and negative 1. And this point will be, let's just see, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be 4 and 5. 
and this point is going to be zero and behind. Now, state the domain, meaning you, you already have it, just, just name it. Now, if I look at this, number B, okay, I think I'm going to take first the grid, otherwise there's so many lines, now it doesn't matter. Okay, so the domain, so if I look, what is the smallest value? It's, this is the domain, remember. The zero, and what's the biggest value? It's four. So the domain is going to be x is bigger and equal to zero and smaller and equal to four. And then I'm going to go up and the range. Now, if you look at the range, what is the low? You can actually see it from the sketch also, or you can just look here, uh, because this was all the range. So what is the smallest value? So y is bigger than equal to negative 1, and smaller than equal, and what is my, what is the biggest value? It is 5, and that will be my range. And that's how you do it.